welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ समासस namely avyayi bhava samasa bahubrihi samasa and dvandva samasa currently we are focused on the avyayi bhava samasa this is an extremely important type of samasa in sanskrit the features of avyayi bhava samasa can be represented in the form of an equation mentioned on this particular slide we have been repeating this again and again only to highlight this part so much that it should become part of the system of the learner that is in fact the hallmark of the teaching tradition developed by indians and i am sure that must be the way universally so we have x and y two entities independent separate from each other in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent this x and y are semantically connected their meanings are connected the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them together and to generate an output in the form of x y which is one unit so two units as input and one unit as an output now in order to show the correlation between the one output unit and the two constituent units we have highlighted x in bold characters this is significant now this x y represents the avyayi bhava samasa now this unit is having one word form unified form and also one meaning and also one accent now in this xy x acts as the head of the unit in this avyayi bhava samasa x is generally an avyaya and indeclinable an xy which is an avyayi bhava samasa is also termed as avyaya by panini in his ashtadhyayi by the sutra avyayi bhavascha so x is an avyaya and the output xy is also an avyaya that goes to show how x formally acts as the head similarly meaning wise also 
x acts as the head so that when x y is related to some other word and its meaning in the sentence, this interrelation is possible only through the meaning of x. So these are the features of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa, very important features represented in a very simple equation. In the Ashtadhyayi, the Avyayi Bhava Samasa is stated and its features are stated at different places. So the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras, namely the compound prescribing sutras which state the Avyayi Bhava Samasa in specific semantic conditions and some other formal conditions, they are stated in 2.1. To be precise, from 2.15 onwards up to 2.121 included. So 2.15 is Avyayi Bhavaha and 2.121 is Anyapadarthecha Saudnyayam. Incidentally, 2.122 is Tatpurushaha and from this sutra onwards, we see the treatment of the Tatpurusha Samasa in 2.1. And this part we have already dealt with in the first course on Samasa in this series. Then the Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras, the sutras which prescribe the suffix added at the end of the Samasa, of Yaibhava Samasa. These sutras are found in 54107 up to 54112, this particular small section of the sutras. Similarly, 62121, etc., are the Swaravidhayaka sutras, sutras stating the accent of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. This is how Avyayi Bhava Samasa is treated in the Ashtadhyayi at various places. So, we started studying the sutras which prescribe the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. We started with 215 Avyayi Bhavaha and then we studied the big sutra stating various semantic conditions. In the Sutra, Avyayam Vibhakti Samipa Samruddhi Vridhyartha Bhavatyaya Samprati Shabta Pradurbhava Paschad Yathano Purvya Yogavadya Sadrishya Sampati Sakalyanta Vachaneshu. Then we studied some other sutras as well. In the Sutra Avyayam Vibhakti etc., the word Avyaya is stated in the Prathama Vibhakti and therefore by the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam and Avyaya invariably becomes the first member of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. We also saw some other sutras where the Avyaya, however, is mentioned, a specific Avyaya is mentioned in the Tritiya Vibhakti. And therefore, that specific avyaya does not occupy the first position in the samasa. For example, akshapari and so on. Akshashalaka sankhya parena. This is the last sutra that we have seen in the previous lecture. Now, in this particular lecture, we proceed further and study the subsequent sutras which prescribe the avyayi bhava samasa. First, we study 2111. This is a very important sutra, Vibhasha. Vibhasha, that is the sutra. Vibhasha means an option. Whatever operation is stated applies optionally. That is the meaning of the word Vibhasha according to the Paninian grammatical tradition. This sutra is considered to be an Adhikara Sutra and its scope of application 
is from this particular sutra 2111 onwards up to 2217 and there we find nityam nityam krida jivika yoho in 2217 so nityam cancels vibhasha what it implies is the following that all the samasas in this particular section namely from 2111 onwards up to 2217 all the samasas in this particular section they take place optionally they are generated optionally what it means is that the resolution namely the vigraha of these samasas includes the words which are part of the samasa svapada vigraha What it also means is that a particular idea, a particular concept can be expressed in terms of the sentence by two independent separate padas and also the same concept can be expressed by a word which merges these two padas and forms and generates an output in the form of a compound. There are some compounds, however, which are such that the concept expressed by the samasas cannot be expressed by the sentence. And the concept expressed by the samasas cannot be expressed by using the same words which are found in the samasa. Such samasas are called nitya samasa. This we have studied earlier. Now what this Adhikara Sutra indicates is that the sutras stated previously from 215 up to 2110 they are all describing or prescribing the nitya samasa. Because this is the Vibhasha Adhikara and therefore, all the sutras which precede this one, they are stating the samasa, which is a nitya samasa. This is the important implication of this adhikara. Now, the samasas governed by this vibhasha adhikara are the following. Some avyayi bhava samasas, because we have already seen that from 215 up to 2110, these sutras have already stated the Avyayi Bhava Samasa, which is not governed by this Adhikara. Therefore, that is the Nitya Samasa. However, the sutras stated from 2111 up to 2121, they are all governed by this Adhikara Vibhasha, and therefore, the Avyayi Bhava Samasa stated by these sutras can be optional. What it means is that the concept expressed by the samasa can also be expressed by the sentence using the same words. And there isn't an additional meaning which is part of the meaning conveyed by the samasa in these particular Avyayi Bhava Samasa examples. This Vibhasha Adhikara also includes the Tatpurusha Samasas, many of them. For example, Vibhakti Tatpurusha, all the Dvitiya, Tritiya, Chaturthi, Panchami, Shashti, Saptami Tatpurusha Vibhakti Samasas, all of them they are governed by this Vibhasha Adhikara. Also, the Karmadharaya Samasa, Karmadharaya Tatpurusha Samasa, is governed by this adhikara. Similarly, Ekadeshi Tatpurusha as well as Nai Tatpurusha, all of them, they are covered in this particular adhikara. <coughs> so, for example, the samasa output generated by 2.1.12 is Apatrigartam. 
what it means is away from Trigarta. Now, Trigarta is the name of a particular country, a particular place, region. And the important part is that the Vigraha of this Samasa, Apa Trigartam, will include both these words, Apa and Trigarta. Now, the Vigraha would be Apa Trigarte Bhyaha, which means away from Trigarta. So, the idea away from Trigarta is expressed by two independent Padas, Apa and Trigarte Bhyaha, as well as the Samasa, Apa Trigartam. This is what is the implication of the Samasa governed by the Vibhasha Adhikara. Earlier we have seen the Avyayi Bhava Samasa stated in the Nityam Adhikara before this Vibhasha Adhikara. This does not behave in the same fashion. So we say Harau and the Samasa is Adhihari. So the Samasa Adhihari is not dissolved as Adhi Harau. No. The Samasa Adhihari is dissolved as Harau. That's all. The Samasa Yatha Shakti is not dissolved as Yatha Shakti. No. It is dissolved as Shaktim Anatikramya, etc. This is the important feature and important implication of this Vibhasha Adhikara as far as Avyayi Bhava Samasa is concerned. Compare Apatrigartam and Apatrigarte Bhyaha with the Tatpurusha Samasa that we have already studied in the first course, namely Raja Purushaha and Radnya Purushaha. Both of them convey the same idea, the king's man. Similarly, the compound Kashtashritaha and the dissolution Kashtam Shritaha, both of them convey the same meaning and this is the implication once again of Vibhasha, Vibhasha Adhikara. Now let us look at the next sutra in this particular Adhikara, which is Apa Pari Bahirancha Baha Panchamya 2.1.12. This sutra has got two padas. Apa Pari Bahirancha Baha is the first pada and Panchamya is the second pada. Now Apa Pari Bahirancha Baha is Prathama Bahuvachana of the words Apa Pari Bahiranchu. Now, this is a big samasa having four constituents, Apa Pari Bahis as well as Anchu. Now, since this big samasa with these four constituents is mentioned in Prathama, these words they are termed as Upasarjana by the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. 1 to 43 and then they will be occupying the initial position of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa generated by this particular Sutra. Now Upper Pari and Bahis these three are already stated to be Avyayas in different Sutras. Upper Pari and Bahis. Anchu is a mention of the verbal root Ancha, which means to go as well as to worship. So, what Anchu stands for is the derivates of Anchu, the, the derivates at the end of which appears the verbal root Anchu, which is Ancha. That is what is referred to by Anchu in this particular Sutra. So this mention of Anchu refers to the words derived from this root Ancha and which have received the status of an Avyaya. Only then it matches with the 
remaining three words upper pari and bahis which are avyayas the examples of the words derived from the verb anchu and which have received the status of an avyaya are prak as well as pratyak these are the avyayas which are derived by adding certain suffix to the verbal root anch with the preverbs pr and prati etc the second pad in the sutra 2112 is panchamya this is in tritiya ekavachana 3 slash 1 which means with the fifth triplet of the vibhakti is namely panchami vibhakti what it means is with the words the supantas ending in the fifth triplet or panchami now what this assumes is that this sutra assumes that panchami is stated in relation to all these avyayas and such a stated panchami vibhakti with reference to all these avyayas is compounded now this assumption is also very important why we shall see in a minute now panchami is indeed stated with reference to upper and pari the two avyayas for example the sutra panchami apang pari bhi states that the fifth triplet panchami vibhakti is to be added after the words associated semantically with the meanings of the words apa ang and pari now panchami apang pari bhi is 2 3 this has got a co reference with the sutra 1487 which states that the words apa and pari are termed as karma pravachaniya when the sense of exclusion or separation is to be denoted also 1487 states that the word ang is termed karma pravachaniya when the sense of boundary is denoted however no such statement is found with reference to the word bahis so now the tradition says that on the force of this sutra itself we should assume that the word associated with bahis gets the fifth triplet added to it asmad eva dnyapakat bahir yoge panchami the problem faced by the tradition is the following as far as the words apa and pari are concerned by separate statements panchami vibhakti is stated in relation to these words and this 2112 is now stating the samasa of this such a panchami stated by 2310 in relation with 1487 with reference to apa and pari but with reference to bahis there isn't any statement stating panchami vibhakti now this is a problem and this problem is solved by the tradition by saying that because the sutra is prescribing a samasa of bahis with the word ending in panchami the sutrakar assumes that the panchami is already stated with reference to bahis this is what we must understand otherwise why would sutrakar if he knows that there is no statement prescribing panchami in association with bahis why would he state such a samasa in the first place since he has stated the samasa he does know or he is aware or he does indicate that there is panchami to be stated in association with the word bahis that's why the tradition says asmadevadnyapakat bahir yoge panchami 
on account of the force of this statement itself. The word in association with the word Pahis gets the Panchami Vibhakti or the fifth triplet. Now let us look at the words continued from the previous sutras. So we have Avyayam that continues from 216, Sahasupa continues from 214, Samasaha continues from 213, Avyayi Bhavaha from 215, Samarthapadavirihi from 211, Vibhasha from 211. Having put all these words together, we get the meaning of this particular sutra, namely, an avyaya subanta, apa pari bahis and anchu is compounded with another semantically related subanta, ending in panchami vibhakti optionally, and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhava. I repeat, an avyaya subanta, avyayam, sup, apapari bahis and anchu, apapari bahiranchavaha is compounded samasyate with another semantically related subanta, samarthena subantena sah, ending in panchami, panchamya, optionally vibhasha, and the resultant samasa, samasaha is called avyayi bhava, avyayi bhavaha. Now let us take an example. If the meaning to be conveyed is excluding the trigartha region or away from the trigartha region, we have the laukika vigraha in the form of apa trigarte bhyaha. Note that both these words, they are separated by spaces, apa and trigarte bhyaha. In fact, trigarte bhyaha is also seen with an explicit vibhakti added after the word trigarta in the form of the suffix bhyas or bhyaha. We also note that there is no vibhakti explicitly visible after the word apa, but that doesn't mean that it is not a separate independent pada because it is denoting a separate independent meaning as well. So, apa is a separate pada, trigarte bhyaha is a separate pada and both these form part of the sentence. So, this is the laukika vigraha. From this, we get the alaukika vigraha in the following manner, apa plus su plus trigarta plus bhyas. Now we get the samasa saudhnya. Now we get the pratipadika saudhnya. Then we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho. <coughs> and then we get upper plus zero plus trigarta plus zero. And then we join these words together and we get upper trigarta as the finally derived compound output. Now, when we use this apatrigartha in the sentence, we add the suffix su to it, apatrigartha plus su. Now, because the avyai bhava samasa apatrigartha ends in short a, so this su does not get deleted by the sutra avyayad apsupaha. Rather, this su is substituted by am by the sutra navyai bhavat atomtva panchamyaha. And then by applying the Sandhi rules, we get the form apatrigartam, which is used in the sentence. For example, apatrigartam vrushto devaha. It rained excluding the trigarta. It rained everywhere, excluding the trigarta region. That is the meaning of the sentence apatrigartam vrushto devaha. And we have used the compound apatrigartam and avyayi bhava samasa. Similarly, in the same meaning, we also have the laukika vigraha pari trigartebhyaha. So here we have 
once again pari as a separate pada both apa and pari they are termed karma pravachaniya by the sutra apa pari varjane and then by the sutra panchamya pang pari bhi we get panchami vibhakti after the word which is associated with apa and pari in both these cases the word trigarta is associated with apa and pari and therefore the word trigarta is added with the panchami vibhakti which is bhyas in this particular case so the laukika vigraha is pari trigarte bhya now we get the alaukika vigraha in the form of pari plus su plus trigarta plus bhyas then we get the samasa saudnya by krutta dhita samasascha we get pratipadika saudnya and then we apply the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho and we delete both the sups so we have pari plus zero plus trigarta plus zero and then we merge them together and we get pari trigarta as the finally derived compound output when we use it in the sentence we add the suffix su after pari trigarta so we have pari trigarta plus su because the avay bhava samasa pari trigarta ends in short a su is not deleted by the sutra avayadap supaha rather it is substituted by am so we have pari trigarta plus am when we do the sandhi rule we get pari trigartam as the finally derived output of the sentence we use this in the sentence namely pari trigartam vrushto devaha once again the same meaning it rained excluding the trigarta region pari trigartam note that pari trigarta is one unit pari trigarte bhya are two units and pari trigarta is the example of the avyayi bhava samasa similarly when we want to say out of village we have the laukika vigraha gramad bahi now here we must note the same point we stated earlier namely that the panchami that is added after the word grama is not stated by any other sutra explicitly we assume that it is stated only on account of the present sutra 2112 because this sutra is stating the samasa of the panchamyanta pada like gramat with the word bahis so we have gramat ending in panchami so we have bahis plus su plus grama plus nasi bahis is an avyaya and because this word is stated in prathama in this sutra it occupies the initial position of the samasa so we have bahis plus su plus grama plus nasi as the alaukika vigraha now because of this sutra the samasa saudnya takes place then we get the pratipadika saudnya and then we apply the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho and delete both the sups so we have bahis plus zero plus grama plus zero and so we have bahis plus grama and then this sa coming at the end of the pada becomes r by the sutra sasajusho ruhu and finally we get the compound output after having done the sandhi operations namely bahir grama when we use it in the sentence we add the suffix su to it and so we get bahir grama plus su as the next step in the derivation bahir grama is an avyayi bhava samasa therefore by the sutra avyayi bhavascha this is also termed as an avyaya and therefore the suffix su added after an avyaya is deleted normally by the sutra avyayadap supaha but in this case this su is not deleted because bahir grama ends in short a so by applying the sutra navyai bhava datom tva panchamya su is substituted by am and so we get bahir gramam as part of the sentence namely bahir gramam prashto devaha it rained out of the village 
it didn't rain, rain in the village. That is the meaning of the samasa bahirgrama or the word bahirgramam in this particular sentence. And finally, here are the words which end in anchu verbal root and which are avyayas and they get compounded. So we have the meaning before the village. And so the laukika vigraha is pragramat. And then we have the alaukika vigraha prak plus su plus grama plus ngasi. So we get the samasa saudhnya, then the pratipadika saudhnya, then we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho and delete both the sups. So we have prak plus zero plus grama plus zero. And when we merge them together, we get prak grama. And then this ka is substituted by g, so we have pragrama as the finally derived compound output. When it is used in the sentence, we add the suffix su, so we have pragrama plus su. And because this is an avyayi bhava samasa, so it is also an avyaya. So avyayadap supaha will apply, but that will be cancelled by the sutra. Now, yai bhavad atom tvapanchamyaha and this sutra will substitute am in place of su and so we'll get the final word form namely pragramam before the village. In the sentence pragramam vrishto devaha it rained before the village. That is the meaning of the samasa pragramam and that is how it is used in the sentence. To summarize, the Adhikara Vibhasha stated by 2111 is very important as it divides the section prescribing Nitya Samasas and also Anitya Samasa. On the basis of the prescription of the compound, the tradition accepts that a particular case, for example Panchami, is stated in relation to another word. This takes us back to the Samartha theory which is stated to be the base of this takes us back namely to the point that Samartha theory is based on the Karaka theory. Next we study how the processing of the Avebhava Samasa happens with remaining semantic conditions stated in the subsequent sutras and how the process progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and how that output behaves in the sentence. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.